completely. They work extremely collaboratively with instructional support, and they are prime players in our student support team. They set a great example for everybody else. And the third one, I, I know it's near and dear to your heart. It's been a um, school board goal for a couple of years now, is technology. And this shows not only your commitment to it, but the town support. The uh, installation of smart boards, the completing the installation in all of the classrooms at Palm Cove is the collaborative effort of the school board funding in the beginning, which was coupled with the parents association, and finally the many contributors to, to see. Um, and that, again, is another effect that has been magnified, because once the school, the uh, smart boards are installed, they don't do much until people don't have to use them. Uh, internally, our tech support person, our tech integrator, and the teachers themselves have been spreading the word of how to use them. And I'm sure you'd be pleased to learn. We, we, we want them to be tools, not sitting on the, just sitting on the wall. That, that's happening. Those are the three highlights. And moving on to preparation for the budget, it's, it's, the, it's what we've been doing for years. We've gone through, when I say we, the whole staff, we go through every line item, I report to Paul Maiden and the superintendent. And last year, I think we kind of peered over the edge. I think we've gone as far as we can in cuts. I agree we can. If we cut any further, I think we're going to permanently damage the system. So we went through everything and decided that a maintenance budget would allow us, when I say we, the team leaders were involved with the teams, that if we could keep what we have, we could keep making progress as a given example of the uh, highlights of the year. The good news, though, about the budget is that this is the first year, I think in two years, we haven't had to reckon with uh, curtailment and we haven't had the budget freeze to get through the year. And this reminded me of the importance of of having that, that direct connection to the classroom. It's a small part of the budget, but the teachers have been able to uh, replenish books in the classroom. They've had opportunities to go to outside the workshop for professional development, and that set a ripple effect through the school. Which gets me to the conclusion of the budget. It's essentially what Ken said. If you exclude salaries and benefits, it's up only about $3,000. I think if we can keep going with the end of the that we have to those other examples that will continue to improve the conference school. Any questions you have for Tom? Uh, there's a supply line item in here with a $44,000 increase. Is that yeah, that's um, that's an accounting uh, trick. Pauline, that was that was federal funds that paid for it this year, and those funds are gone. So that the, the supply line is not up; uh, it's just the, um, the okay. federal funds that paid for it. The source of the funds is different, yeah. but the amount is not. Is yeah, okay. You can see that in all three schools. Last year, we used that federal stimulus money for the supplies. It's going to feel like an increase to teachers because of what is about that curtailment and, uh, and no freeze. It feels better, which is important when we're out. We weren't able to spend that money either. We should have felt that way this year somewhat, yeah, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's helping people plan for the future. We were, they were shocked that we could actually get new things. Which page are you on? Um, I think we'll the salaries and benefit uh, tab where it lists all salaries and benefits. Uh, if you're looking at account 8700-1230, salaries with substitutes. Um, we're proposing the same amount as last year, $60,941. So There's no increase. Okay, so it should be a little more uncommon. And then is that the same for the study fees? Um, um, that is budgeted also. So the same. The same. Yep. Um, and then I assume teacher leaders uh, budget. 
only real change in the substitute is that we're using the automated system this year. So that's changed. But not the price. We have money for substitutes, yes. yes. So the money we have for substitutes. Um, the other question I have for Kilo Council um, is that uh, um, when you get down to the uh, teacher serve, uh, in services for staff development, you've got it was seen $5,000 for all staff. Which um, line is that page? Page three. Page three in the bottom, for the construction. Um, no, it's on your, in your section, um, page okay. three. So, things uh, have been put in five. We have, I use both accounts for that. Fifteen hundred and fifteen oh one. So you return to the five thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, fifteen oh two is specifically for reading recovery. The other two we tend to combine for special projects. So the five thousand dollars for staff development can be used for workshops, and the twelve thousand five hundred is used for projects over the summer and other professional development. The total is about the same. <laughs> community has picked up remedial math for third and fourth graders, I think, yeah. um, over the last several years. Is that um, something that you think is going to, is that a need that's going to continue? And if so, is that is it in the budget or is it not in the budget? It's not in this budget because it's a maintenance budget. It, it, it is a need, but I'm, I'm not sure the time is right for me to put that in the budget. Uh, if, if it were to be in there, it would cost a lot more than it does now. And we're doing it on a shoestring. And if that would become an official part of it, it would be a bit of a problem. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Tom? Not Steve. Okay, so following the themes that Ken pointed out in the listening, listen and learn meetings, we're focusing on uh, continuous improvement, making sure that that pervades all the work that we're doing, gets into some of those 1500 and 1501 categories that you just mentioned, Tom. And uh, also you'll notice that my supply line's up $34,000. That's an ARA fund thing. We'll get to that. Um, I, I think that uh, as you look at this, hopefully what you see in the highlights are that there are a lot of different ways that kids are involved in the middle school and that kids have the opportunity to, um, to, to uh, experience success and we know that they also have the experience to the opportunity to experience things that aren't successful and that's part of the, the, uh, the role of middle school is to let kids learn how to deal with things with uh, the, the good sides with grace and aplomb and how to learn to roll with the punches and the things that don't work as well. But um, I think what we're seeing in our highlights and in some of our standardized assessments is that uh, overall we're doing well. So we certainly plan to do better. Um, the. Uh, the, at the bottom of the list, there is, it says about the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, Middle School Parents Association. They support activities, everything from um, lead teacher positions in the past to drums, uh, drum teaching in Ghana and art in Italy, and National Science Teachers Convention attendance uh, in Kansas City, um, technology resources in the schools to uh, provide our, our teachers with 
different ways to reach the students who are in front of them today who are a much more technologically savvy group. Um, I'd also like to say that uh, beyond this information, we just, as the girls reported tonight, the young ladies, they said about the scholastic writing contest. I think it's great that the school is getting involved in all of those kinds of things. It, it's not because <coughs> we can win a silver key or we can have a, uh, a student finish first in the Native American essay contest. What it's about for me is that we're giving these kids authentic audiences to, to read their writing. And they have, a, they have a whole different purpose than what's my grade going to be for this, for this paper when it turns in. So I really appreciate those opportunities, and I think the teachers do as well. Um, we are heavily focused on the literacy aspects. We've learned quite a bit from Jamie Michaud's role in the past uh, three years. We're working with Linda and Angela, uh, uh, Linda Alfiero and Angela Schipani this year. You'll see some of that reflected in, in a minute when I get to the budget number to some of the line items. Over the past few years, you see in the budget review history, it talks about uh, that you can see that we haven't added positions. We've just, uh, as I was talking with Ken today about one of the positions that we're shifting in our numbers of classes, he said, so let me get this straight. You're just rearranging the furniture. And I said, it's exactly what we're doing. Um, so we have, uh, for instance, this year, we've got seven, uh, excuse me, six fifth grade classes and seven sixth grade classes. Next year, that number will swap. So I'll still have 13 sections. We have a couple of retirements that are happening, but those positions are needed positions and will be refilled. Uh, we're not adding any, any staffing positions uh, again this year. We're just reworking what we have and trying to use our resources smarter in smarter fashions. Um, you can see that the current enrollment is 550 students. We're projecting that will be at 554 next year. So again, another uh, another year of fairly flat enrollment for the middle school, fairly fairly consistent. So the staffing will make, remain consistent as well. Um, the total budget for the middle school and in, in, uh, beyond salaries and benefits is a change of 3,000. $24 a decrease in that amount. And just so, as you look at some of the lines, you might wonder some of the questions that I've heard here already about the coupon code. So again, the supply line is, uh, no, you'll note that that's up $34,000. That's because of the uh, ARRA funds. That's where uh, we had captured that amount for this year. And so next year, that's going to be picked up in the budget. Also, we are using the information that we're learning from Jamie Michaud, Linda Alfiero, and Angela Schapani in promoting uh, different aspects of literacy. And to do that, some of the structures that we've been accustomed to have changed. We're really pushing, like in the books and periodicals, you'll see it's up $6,063 because we're really working to, to get into self-selected novels or some kind of a guided selection and students using literature circles, um, uh, pushing much faster pace through the readings, and using uh, trade books and social studies. So for instance, if students are studying something about uh, the Salem witch trials and period of history, and, and they may also decide at that time that in the social studies class they're going to read uh, Witch of Blackbird Pond. Um, so I want to give them the opportunity to be able to expand the literacy opportunity uh, more broadly across the school. In the equipment lines, we're up $2,000. And the way that that works is that um, Joe Gilkey has done a magnificent job milking the kiln that we have in our school currently. He has saved that four years in a row that I'm aware of from when Portland Pottery would come in and say that shot and Joe would fix it. So um, we, we're really at the point with that. So the, the kiln is an extra $2,600. Plus, we need to uh, add a, another piece of equipment, a paper cutter, a heavy-duty paper cutter for the cardboard and other items in the, in the art room. <coughs> um, music. In class for music, Terry White used to come to me, and, and his, his regular joke that he just loved to do with women and said he, a piece of something that had fallen off equipment and just walk out of my office and say, Terry, just tell me what that is. I have no idea what I'm looking at. You know, it's a this, that, and other thing off the drum set. So I started to hit drum set more often than most other parts. And uh, Terry bet me, he says, I don't, I don't give that.